Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Let us say the song of Hosea together. Come, let us return to our God, who has torn us and will heal us. God has struck us and will bind up our wounds. After two days, revive us. On the third day, restore us, that in God's presence we may live. Let us humble ourselves. Let us strive to know the Lord, whose justice dawns like morning light. It's dawning as sure as the sunrise. God's justice will come to us like a shower, like spring rains that water the earth. God be with you, also with you. Let us pray. God, our rock and refuge, keep us safe in your care and strengthen us with your grace that we may pray to you faithfully and love one another boldly, following the example of Jesus, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you, I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Psalm 69. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O God of Israel. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. Save me from the mire, do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. A reading from a letter of Paul to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life.
For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who will kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth, I have come not to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious God, take my lips and speak with them. Take our minds and think with them. Set our hearts on fire for Christ's sake. Amen. Matthew's gospel this morning fairly assails us with, with provocative commands. Do not be afraid. Proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body. Do not be afraid, God counts even all the hairs of your head. And there are even more challenging statements about who God is and what we are called to do. Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. 
I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. And then, of course, there's his claim that he has come to set children against parents and even daughters-in-law against mothers-in-law. And that we are to love him more than we love our parents or our children. Many contemporary folks read this passage, and there are a number of others like it in the New Testament, and mentally distance themselves, willingly or unwillingly, from what Jesus seems to be asking of us. <clears throat> but we can't. This passage is about discipleship. Jesus is telling his disciples and us what he would have us do. As we read and listen, let's try to hear him in the context of all his teaching and who he is. When he says that he comes not to bring peace on earth, but rather a sword, we should hear that his message, his call to us, is not meant to be soothing and peaceful, but rather disruptive, maybe drastically disruptive, cutting through our usual ideas about tribe and comfort and community. His strong words about family would have been even far more shocking to Jesus' contemporaries than they are to us. In the first century, as before and centuries after in the Middle East, the patriarchal family was absolute. The patriarch decided all matters in the household, including whom his daughters and sons married. No one less left the house to live elsewhere without his permission. Their family values were not ours, but we see and hear echoes of patriarchy in our secular laws, land ownership, and income inequities. Jesus says that to follow him means upsetting this system of authority and replacing it with the authority of the kingdom of God in Christ. And even in his times, even in the Gospels, we read almost nothing about the wives and children of the disciples, and those disciples who also walked away from their families and former lives to follow Jesus. And it's taken women Bible scholars to hold up the discipleship of Mary and Martha, although the church does not call them equal in faith and power. It was the women to whom the risen Lord first appeared. The word disciple means learner. We don't want to learn. Love him more than anyone else in your life. Love him even though your commitment to him to alienate you from those whom you most love in the world. And by the way, are we allowed to take any comfort from the fact that he doesn't mention married couples in his catalog of alienation? The answer is not really. Relationship by blood was much more important than marriage. Love him and learn his teachings. And no matter how bad things are, no matter how persecuted you might be, even to the point of having your life in danger, do not be afraid. Our characteristic move as Christians has been to find an easier way out. A 20th century Lutheran pastor and theologian, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who gained much authority by being executed in a Nazi prison in the struggle against Hitler, called us all to account in his influential book, The Cost of Discipleship, which some of you may have read. Perhaps the central idea of the book is the distinction he makes between what he calls costly grace and cheap grace. Our passage from Matthew's Gospel is all about costly grace. Here's what some of what Bonhoeffer says about that. 
costly grace is the hidden treasure in the field. For the sake of it, we will gladly go and sell all that we have. Costly grace is the gospel which must be asked for, the door at which we must knock. Such grace is costly because it calls us to follow, and it is grace because it costs us our lives, and it is grace because it gives us our only true lives. A common response of many of us nervous and unprepared Christians is to resort what, to what Bonhoeffer calls cheap grace. Cheap grace, he writes, is the deadly enemy of our church. Cheap grace means grace as a doctrine, a principle, a system. It means forgiveness of sins proclaimed as a general truth the love of God taught as the Christian conception of God. Cheap grace means the justification of sin without the justification of the sinner. Grace alone does everything, they say, and so everything can remain just as it was before. The world has been justified by grace, Christians know that and take it seriously. Therefore, let us live like the rest of the world. Let Christians rest content in their worldliness and with the renunciation of any higher standard than the world. They are doing it for the sake of the world rather than for the sake of grace. Cheap grace is the grace we bestow on ourselves. Let's try for a moment this morning in the days after George Floyd's funeral, Breonna Taylor's murder and Rayshard Brooks's fatal shooting to look squarely at our response to the reality of white racism as a loud, insistent call from Christ to costly grace. Costly grace in this time and circumstance means responding in costly ways. Costly literally, meaning social spending and investments, and costly figuratively, meaning exerting ourselves to interrogate our own racism, past and present, and exert ourselves daily if possible over time to learn our social investment in the systems that make African-American life so unequal, so hard. And as we see on one heart-wrenching video after another, the structures that sicken, impoverish, and kill black Americans. Costly grace begins, only begins, when the body of Christ listens to and feels the wounds of African America. Consider costly investment in equally excellent schools in black neighborhoods. We know that private schools in Philadelphia spend twice as much as public schools to educate children whose neighborhoods were redlined and then default swapped for profits guaranteed by the government unlike their homes, what is your commitment to change? If you are privileged to be in a position to hire people, commit to researching, calling, and finding out the good black candidates for jobs instead of bemoaning the lack of applicants. Listen, really listen to what black women and men are saying when they talk about their lives in this country and then commit and follow through with what you in your life right now will do about it. Cheap grace is feeling sorry, regretting what is, and finally feeling regret over the intractable problems of race in America. Cheap grace is feeling guilty and not wanting to be bothered because you personally don't know where to start. 
and pray for the strength to knock on the door. Pray for forgiveness for the enjoyment of privilege without noticing the cost to brothers and sisters who experience every day what many are just now seeing on cell phone video. Pray for the youth who, who does not come in our doors but are out in the streets protesting for equal rights and life and justice. Pray for one in four young African Americans whose lives are tangled up with the system we call justice. Pray for the other three who are bullied by police and troopers and guards everywhere. The Cost of Discipleship was first published in 1937. It is quoted in black womanist thinking, I bring the voices of my people by Chaniqua Walker Barnes to this day. As Germany, which began as a parliamentary system, continued to descend into Nazism and then World War II, Bonhoeffer's ideas became more searching and more radical. His most famous book is Letters and Papers from Prison, which came out after his death in 1945. In letters to family and friends, he searched ever deeper in himself and in the world for what God and God in Christ meant for the contemporary Christian. Ever since its publication, the book has been a kind of manual for those who seek to run the rapids between the rock walls of searing doubt and about some Christian doctrines and life-crippling despair at ever being able to embrace an abundant life of faith. <clears throat> In one of the most famous passages, he writes, God is teaching us that we must live as people who can get along very well without God. The God who is with us is the God who forsakes us. Before God and with him, we live without God. God allows himself to be edged out of the world and onto the cross. Our religiosity makes us look in our distress to the power of God as a deus ex machina. The Bible, however, directs us to the powerlessness and suffering of God. Only a suffering God can help. Only a suffering God can help. See that, see how that informs his insights about costly grace. The suffering Christ. What does that mean for discipleship, our call to be disciples of Christ? Bonhoeffer says this, to the question where today do we hear the call of Jesus to discipleship, there is no other answer than this, hear the word, receive the sacrament, in it hear him himself, and you will hear his call. We are hearing it today in our own city, marching right past the building where Brad Luna and Adam Wanis were married last week. The call to justice and love in Christ is the demanding yet joyous lifelong project for all of us to hear his call and act. Amen. Let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate 
of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in all our family, friends, and neighbors, loving one another as Christ loves us. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, both things we have left done and things we have left undone. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Good morning, everyone. This is Gabriella from the church office with your announcements for today. Online giving is available through parishgiving.org. A link to parishgiving.org is located at slatechurch.org. Evening prayer has returned at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesdays through Zoom, also through Zoom, we will be hosting a Bible study at 10 a.m. this morning after the broadcast of the service. At 12 noon, coffee hour will be meeting virtually over Zoom. Please refer to your bulletin 
to see an important announcement regarding vestry elections. Also, refer to your bulletin for an important transition update from the search committee. Let's join together in prayer. Prayer for this time of transition. Gracious God, we thank you for this time of transition at the Church of St. Luke and the Epiphany. We rejoice in the blessings and the richness of our life together thus far. And we look expectantly towards the future in you and with one another as we seek our next rector. Jesus taught us to seek first the kingdom of God, and we place our fears, anxieties, wishes, and dreams of our congregation in your hands. Help us to join together in the spirit of hope. Guide our search committee as they work to find a rector who will lead us, tend to us, and challenge us. And when the journey seems long and the light of our faith dims, help us to remember that you walk with us always. Help us all to be open to the stirrings of the Spirit and trust that all things will work for our good. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, 
we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Let us say together, in union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Jesus. I proclaim your resurrection. Because I love you above all things and cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.